When Abdul Muttalib went to Yemen to represent the people of Mecca, he was parted from his grandson. The ruler of Yemen, Saif, recaptured his country from the Abyssinians and sat on his father's throne. The chiefs of the tribes from all over Arabia were coming to congratulate him. Our Prophet's grandfather went with his people and they were accepted into the palace. Abdul Muttalib introduced himself and the others to the new king. He said, We have come from a place which is blessed by Allah. We are the servants of the Kaabe. The king listened to him very carefully and then asked, That man over there who spoke so nicely, who are you? Abdul Muttalib replied, I am the son of Hashim, Abdul Muttalib. The king was very pleased when he heard this. I am very pleased that you have visited us. You are a man worthy of being listened to day and night. We know how honorable you and your people are. The king didn't stop there. He wanted to show how sincere he was. He asked Abdul Muttalib to be his guest for a whole month and Abdul Muttalib happily accepted this offer. Abdul Muttalib and his friends stayed at the palace for a month, but during this time they had virtually been forgotten about. They couldn't see the king or given permission to go back to Mecca. The king only remembered about his guests after a month. One day he secretly asked for Abdul Muttalib to come to him. He said, Dear Abdul Muttalib, I am going to tell you a secret and I think that this secret concerns you. This is an important secret that I have been hiding from someone. Our Prophet's grandfather Abdul Muttalib became very curious and he asked, What this secret? It is about a child who should have been born at around this time. This child will be born near where you live. There is a mole between both of his shoulders. After his mother and father pass away, first his grandfather will take care of him too, and after that his uncle will take care of him. He will conquer many beautiful places and will be the leader of the people until doomsday. Abdul Muttalib became very curious. He had felt something was coming and felt very excited. He asked again, My king, let your life be long. May your empire last many years and your glory be eternal. Can you tell me more about this child? The king didn't refuse his wish. He told Abdul Muttalib about some signs and then he looked straight into his eyes. Dear Abdul Muttalib, if you look at all of these signs, this child is your grandson, and the grandfather I mentioned is you. Abdul Muttalib started shaking after he heard these words. He bowed down. This time it was the ruler's turn to wonder what was happening. He asked, What's happened to you, Abdul Muttalib? Abdul Muttalib was feeling very happy and started to talk about the things he knew. Dear King, I had a son named Abdullah. I loved him dearly and arranged a marriage for him with the daughter of one of the very wise men from Mecca. They had a child and that child has a mole between both of his shoulders. My grandson has all of the signs you have just mentioned. His mother and father have passed away to the next world and now I'm taking care of him. King Saif wasn't wrong. He felt happy too. He looked straight at Abdul Muttalib and said, Dear Abdul Muttalib, please take very good care of and protect your child. The Jews are his enemies. They might hurt him. Be careful of this. I also want you to know this, Allah won't let anything happen to him. After a couple of days had passed, Abdul Muttalib and his friends returned to Mecca. 
They had the presents with them that the king gave them. Abdul Muttalib felt as if he had been gone for years. The first thing he did when he arrived in Mecca was to cuddle his grandson. The pain of being parted from his grandson had now disappeared after being reunited with him. One day Abdul Muttalib suddenly became ill. He was now very old. His illness was getting worse and it was clear that time was near for him to go into the next world. Until this day he had taken very good care of his grandson. However, there was one last duty he had to do. He had to find someone that he could trust with his grandson. He called all of his sons to his house. At first he thought of Abu Lahab, but he was actually a very cold-hearted man. He couldn't imagine leaving his grandson with him. Then he thought of Abbas, but he wasn't the right person either because he had many children and would only just be able to take care of them. He then remembered Hadrat Hamza, but changed his mind again. Hadrat Hamza was young but a curious man and wouldn't take good enough care of the child. Suddenly, he thought about Abu Talib and said to himself, That's it, he will be the protector of my grandson. Mind you, Abu Talib was not a wealthy man. He had no riches, but was very thoughtful, kind and loving man. Only he could protect Abdul Muttalib's grandson in the very best way. Along with this, Abdul Muttalib asked his dear grandson, which one of your uncles would you like to stay with? Our beloved prophet replied to this question with his actions. He got up and hugged his uncle Abu Talib. It was then clear to see who our prophet wanted to stay with. Abdul Muttalib was on his deathbed and perhaps these were his last moments.
sit down at the table if our prophet wasn't there. He brought fruitfulness to the table at every meal time. Everyone who ate with our prophet would always leave the table feeling full. Sometimes food would be left over. When our prophet wasn't present at meal times, everyone would finish their food without feeling full. Since he was a little boy, our prophet always ate very little. He showed respect to the blessings that Allah granted. He never took a bite of food before the elders started eating, and he never complained about feeling hungry or thirsty. Abu Talib's wife also loved the blessed child very much. She took care of him like he was one of her own children. Sometimes she wouldn't look after and get busy with her own children until she dressed and fed our prophet. This way, she tried to stop him from feeling the pain of being left an orphan. And so our prophet always showed the respect towards his auntie. A long time after, when his auntie passed away, he showed his respect to her by saying, Today my mother has passed away. He then took off his shirt and made a shroud out of it. A shroud is what is used to wrap up a person when they are buried. He even went down to her grave and stayed there for a while. The Muslims who saw this became very curious about and asked him why he did this. Our beloved Prophet gave them this explanation. Apart from my uncle Abu Talib, no one cared so much for me as much as this dear woman did. I made her a shroud from my shirt so that she can wear something from the clothes in heaven. I stayed there with her for a while so that she could get used to her grave. Our Prophet would never forget the good things that were done for him. He was now 10 years old. His uncle was finding it very difficult to get by and was in need for help. His only income came from a couple of sheep and goats. A shepherd was needed to herd these animals. However, this meant spending more money. Our Prophet didn't allow this to happen and he decided to herd these animals himself.